Good morning, Frank Watkins with Joe. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, everybody. And, uh, yeah, it looks like you're going to cop the, um, the Frank and Joe show. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're getting. <laughs> okay, the All Ords. Um, it's finally, well, it's in the process of breaking the 7600 level, which mm. um, I've thought for a while is critical since, what, since back in February when we made that first high and then backed off. Yeah. So roughly 7600 has become a critical level. We have formed a higher low. Um, we did squeeze into this sort of symmetrical triangle, uh, which are by nature very, very treacherous, uh, could break up, could break down, could, could do anything. So again, this is a reason why I like these horizontal lines as opposed to the upward sloping or downward sloping lines. I, I don't place a lot of importance on them. Um, but good start to the day. Uh, if we can close here above 7,600, I'll be happy. Uh, and if we close somewhere in that region, at least it's four days in a row upwards. Yep. A couple of things I want to talk about very quickly. Uh, I always look for volume spikes. Now, there's a stock we were looking at on Friday, um, but having a close look today, if I arrow back, let's say, to 14th of March, 2.5 million traded on the 15th, 4.8 million, on the 16th, 4.3 million on the 17th, 4.9 million. So you can take it that sort of three to five million is the standard um, recent daily volume. Then we get to Friday, 85 million, big volume spike, jump in OBV. Interestingly enough, no follow through today. So as far as I'm concerned, we can assume that 80 billion, sorry, 80 million of those shares that traded on Friday were some sort of crossing, some sort of institutional um, crossing of stock. I, I don't know. There's no news items on it yet. Uh, but what looked like a great breakout, um, mm. we decided, given that that breakout was Friday, um, uh, we just thought we'd wait for the weekend to see what happened today. Well, what's happened today is a big fact, nothing. nothing. Yeah. If we go um, to the market depth, uh, you'll notice there's only about um, six, um, six million, no, 600,000 being offered. So, if that 85 million were genuine volume traded on the market with people buying and selling, um, the buying pressure there would have taken this up to a dollar or dollar yep. ten or whatever. So yep. just be aware of some of these volume spikes. Now, by the same token, one of my favourites, whoops, um, FFX did the same thing. If we go back here, uh, what, we have 15 million traded on the 14th, 8 million on the 15th, 15 million on the 16th, 19 million on the 17th. So 14 to 18 million is probably your average over the last five, six days. And then all of a sudden, 79 million go through. Um, and again, in a, a pretty tight sort of range, open at 83, close at 83, low of 82, got as high as 87 and a half. So again, that volume spike, uh, you can pretty much ignore it. Um, this one hasn't thrown on balance volume out of plumb because the previous close was 83 uh, cents. So OBV stays flat despite that big rise in volume. If we go back to JRV, um, the market on Friday closed higher than the previous day, so you get this enormous leap in OBV, uh, which is going to affect the shape of OBV for a week or two or three or four. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of those two. Mm -hmm. 
The other one um, that I just want to comment on quickly, Flight Centre. Um, the way I'm looking at this, we finally have uh, a five-month low. We had a run up to a high of around $21.10, higher low, and we're looking oh, for a higher high. Mm. Mm. So the catch is you've got the current price, let's say $19.21, but the higher high is going to be roughly $21.20. So there's $2 just to get back to a breakout point. Mm -hmm. So if you are desperate to own a travel agent and if you believe that Australia is truly open and flying all over the place, then you may want to preempt the break. Now, I'm not going to go into any long um, explanation of options, but you could do one of two things. Let's say you want a parcel of 2,000 of these, you might buy 1,000 now or maybe only 500 now and add the rest when you do get your breakout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you could buy call options. If they're available, um, I haven't looked. I think the option market in Australia is pretty much dead as a doornail. But um, if we had a good viable option market, I'd be the first to jump in there now with a few call options. Um, it's just a safer way of preempting a possible breakout Mm. Any questions? Yeah, do you, um, given that that's uh, the travel industry, do you ever have a look at any of the others just to see what they're doing as well, like Webjet or Qantas? Mm. Not really. Oh, I'd, I'd never um, never own an airline stock anyway. Oh, yeah. um, I think HLO is another travel. Uh, let's go to Webjetting. Very, very similar, similar. setup. Yeah. Major low, high, high low getting ready to go. Yeah, okay. You might, the other thing I'd probably look at there, go to five years, uh, Webjet has been to 12.50, it's at six, there's the potential there mm. to double if you get back to all time highs. Yep. If we go back to flat centre, we're at 19. We're at 20, say so we've been to 60. So mm. to get back to those levels, that's probably three times yeah. your money. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, if you were to buy one flat centre at, let's say, $20, you could buy, uh, mm. um, what's that, six, you could buy three and a half yeah. web jets to yeah. each one. Flight centre. Mm. The webjets would give you more flexibility. Mm. If it jumps suddenly, you can sell half, keep half, so on and so forth. So mm. they're the decisions you need to make. Mm. Interesting. Very yeah. good. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Talk to you at some stage during the week. See Cheers. Ya.